All right, here we go. Lecture on simple harmonic motion. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to it. All right, simple harmonic motion and waves. Uh, so I'm only going to do the first half of this PowerPoint. You're not, we're just concentrating, concentrating on the harmonic motion part. So <coughs> uh, before we get into it, it just wants to review Hooke's law, you know, for a spring, because, uh, you know, there's a, the basic example of simple harmonic motion we're going to talk about is going to have to deal with the spring. So again, this just reviews, um, you know, the, the Hooke's law here. It says, you know, force is equal to kx, where k is the spring constant. Remember, the spring constant is the stiffness of the spring. So each individual spring has its own spring constant. Um, the key is remembering that equilibrium position is the rest length of the spring, and therefore there is no forces acting on it, okay? If you stretch it a distance, that distance is going to be x. So how far you stretch it is x. And remember, the force of the spring is always a restorative force. In other words, it's trying to restore the equilibrium position. So if you look in our first example down here, you stretch it to the right. And the force of the spring is back to the center. So we stretch it to the right. This is our equilibrium position. We've stretched it. The force of the spring is pulling it back towards equilibrium. The next one, we stretch it to the left. And this, the spring wants to push it back to the right to get back to that equilibrium position, right? Pretty straightforward, pretty easy stuff here, okay? Uh, and again, that was review. Uh, just remember, uh, you know, those the variables, okay? I think we have a question about it. Yeah, so it says an ideal spring is hanging from the ceiling at rest and has an unstretched, unstretched length L. L1, sorry. When a mass M is hung from the spring, the stretch length of the spring is L2. What is the spring constant of the spring? All right. So go ahead, pause the video, see what you get, and then I'll go ahead and do it. All right. Welcome back. So hopefully you answered. I'm going to say C is my answer. Yeah, C is my answer. So let's look at this. So I have force. Uh, uh, how do I undo that? I zoomed in. Oh, there we go. Sorry. All right, so I have force of the spring equals kx, right? Well, if it is is hung and it's at rest there, right? We have the weight going down and the force of the spring going up. And since it's not moving, these have to equal. For the spring has to equal the, the weight, right? So I can plug that in, mg. I know k is what I'm looking for. And the length here is this distance. So I want the distance from here to here. So to do that, I'm gonna take L2 minus L1 and it's gonna give me this gap. So I'll do, um, so if I solve, I divide by L2 minus L1, cancels out. So I get K equals MG divided by L2 minus L1, which should be C. That should be my final answer here. And again, that was a review. Let's see if we got it right. Yeah, see, good. All right, so let's talk about simple harmonic motion, right? And what simple harmonic motion is like a motion that repeats itself over and over and over and over again if there's no outside forces acting on it. To start with, what we're gonna observe and, and what the most common one uh, that you're gonna be talking about is a, a a mass okay attached to a uh, a spring uh, that's attached to a wall and what you're going to do is to start the motion you're going to pull it you'll let it go it's going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and it'll keep going back and forth like that if there's no friction right it'll, it'll remain going like that all right so let's kind of take a look at what's happening here and think about it so the equilibrium position here is denoted, right? So, sorry, I keep forgetting to hit draw. I just start drawing without <laughs> hitting the draw button. All right, so equilibrium position here is this blue line, right? So that's where there's no forces on it. So to start the motion, what it's saying is I'm gonna pull the block this way, release it, 
it's going to travel. It's going to travel this way. It's going to reach this point here. It's going to keep going where it reaches this point here, and then it's going to go back. So it's going to reach back this point and then this point. So it's going to go. So if you're if you're looking at an order of how it's going to go, it's going to start at one, go to two, go to three. Then from three, it's going to go to two to one. Then from one, it's going to go to two to three. And it's going to keep repeating it over and over again. So let's look at some key terms and concepts here. Okay. So like I said, this is only if there's no friction. Okay. That th this holds true. When I set the block. Okay. In other words, wherever I stretch it to. Okay. That's going and I release it. That's my maximum position. Right. So it'll never go any further than that. It, when it comes back, it'll always go to that point, but it'll never go further than this point. So if I'm talking about, you know, this point right here, if I pull it and I set this to be the distance I pull it, when it comes back, it will only go to that point. Okay, it will never go further than that, okay? So in position one, in other words, at the position I set it, we can say that X is also equal to the amplitude of the motion. And you'll see that when we get, when we get to the equation and we start graphing this, but remember the position at the max, wherever you set it, is going to be equal to the, to the amplitude of the motion. Now, also, if you think about it, if I release it from rest, its velocity at that point is zero. And then if I think about it, it's going to go back, and then it's going to come back, and it's going to be slowing down, slowing, 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 and then it has to change direction. So at the max point, it's going to be zero. So the velocity always at position one is going to be zero because first off you release it from rest and then this and then it's always changing direction at that point because it'll be approaching it getting there slowing down then going back so it has to stop at the maximum point okay and think about it the so uh the force is directly proportional to the distance right so if i'm at the max distance away from the equilibrium position then I'm going to have my maximum amount of force. And if I remember force is equal to MA, if I have my max force, then I'm going to have my maximum acceleration vector. Okay. So that's what's happening at position one. Okay. Now, when I release it, it's going to be traveling this way, right? It's going to be traveling and I get to position two. In other words, when the block reaches equilibrium. So right away, it's pretty easy. If I'm at equilibrium, the X value here is going to be zero because I'm no, I'm, I'm at equilibrium, right? Makes sense. It should make sense that there is no force acting on this, right? If you're at equilibrium, force of the spring equals KX. If X equals zero, your force of the spring equals zero. So if force equals zero, then a has to equal zero. So at this point here, there is actually no acceleration. There is no acceleration here. Okay. Um, now, what that means is, think about it. When you release it from position one, the block is going to speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, have the same acceleration, acceleration, it's accelerating. Here it has no acceleration. Once it goes this way on this side of the equilibrium position, the spring is pushing it back. In other words, it starts slowing it down. So the speed is going to increase, 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 increase. Nothing, zero acceleration. Now it's going to decrease, 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 decrease. So at equilibrium, the velocity is actually your maximum velocity. It is your maximum velocity. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So that's what happens at the equilibrium point. Let's look at the last position. So now we're going past equilibrium. We're going this way before we start to come back, right? So we're at the position three and we're at the maximum. So in other words, if this was the positive direction and this was the negative direction, we're at negative amplitude for X because it's always gonna go, once you set it, it's gonna go to the negative side and positive side, the same amount of distance. At this point, it's about to change its direction 
back to the right. So again, like position one, our velocity is zero. We have the maximum displacement here because it's equal to the amplitude. So therefore my force is maximum. And again, that's why my acceleration is maximum at that point, okay? And again, remember, it's gonna start at one, go to two, go to three, go from three, go to two, go to one. And it's gonna keep repeating that cycle because it's what we call simple harmonic motion, okay? So let's take a look at this. Um, so another way to think about it is thinking about how something moves in a circle. So you can also talk about simple harmonic motion with circular motion. And I got this little, it's, it's a lot easier to visualize. And since I don't have any lab equipment, I can't really do it. So I, I found a video that does a great job of showing you the motion here. Okay. And when you're thinking about simple harmonic motion, you can think about it as, you know, a spring vertically moving. You can think about as, you know, a spring this way. So it does a good job showing both here. So let's go ahead and, and look at this. Let's take a look. I have placed a yellow marker cap on it so we can observe the circular motion. Of so it's pretty simple. This is moving in a, uh, you know, circular motion. It's moving at a, a constant angular velocity. Of the cap. Does everybody see that the cap is moving in circular motion? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now let me add. Dude, these guys respond better than you guys do on videos. And a side view of the two. Okay, so now what this is, is literally if you shot a video camera from this way on the side, we're going to watch it move, in other words, in a straight line, move up and down. And I want you to watch, okay, and think about what we just talked about at the, at the point. So if I had these points, you know, this would be point one, this would be point two, the equilibrium, and this would be point three. So my max velocity would be at point two. I should pause here for a second. Uh, you know, it's not going to stop, pause, and go. It, it hits, goes back. So just watch how it, how it works here. Turntable and yellow marker cap. Do you see how the cap appears to move in simple harmonic motion? Yeah. No, no. Okay, so then I will add a vertical mass spring system moving in simple. So watch, you can watch. So it's saying like this, this weight hanging is moving the, at the same time. <clears throat> like in the same direction as that marker. Okay. So just watch it. Harmonic motion. Fastest velocity. So slowing down, slowing down. Simple harmonic motion. All right. Yeah, speeding yeah, up, yeah. speeding up. In fact, we can all Max velocity. Okay. Springs at equilibrium. Add a front view of the slowing down, the slowing down. Cap. All right. <laughs> velocity was zero. This is the maximum stretching distance. Okay. We can also. And it's just following this thing moving in a circle, the marker moving in a circle. So again, what we have here is the same thing except on the x-axis. So actually what we looked at, so this would be position two, this would be position one, one, two, and this would be three. All right, if you watch, here you go. Moving in simple harmonic motion. Slows down. Do you now see how the up. cat, when viewed from the side, moves in simple harmonic motion, just like a mass spring system and a pendulum. I saw it from the start. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this. Okay, sure. So <laughs> there, there is a lot going on. So I will simplify it by removing everything but the turntable and yellow marker cap. Now I will add a dot that is motion tracked to the top of the cap. And I will isolate the motion of the dot so it is only... All right, so now you're going to... What he's doing here is making the dot only the vertical motion, right? Because that's what we want, the simple harmonic motion. All right, so watch what it makes here. Moving in the Y direction. This right. dot is now the dot, moving. That black dot is following the vertical position of the yellow marker. And just like the... Right? It's, it's staying at the same level. The staying at the same the level. Cap. In other words, Down. this dot is moving in simple harmonic motion. And watch up. the path it creates if we look at where the dot is located as a function of time. Does anybody recognize the shape of that curve? Oh, uh, that is a sine curve, actually. Right. So this is a, uh, you know, as a function of time, as it goes on, where was it? And it's curving out. It's a cosine curve, actually. It could be either one. Sine and cosine are just shifted along a horizontal axis relative to one another. Right. 
So what they're saying is this could actually represent a sine or cosine, uh, you know, graph. It just depends on where you, you know, if I start my observation here, I have a sine curve. If I start my observation uh, here, I have a cosine curve, okay? So it just depends on what you're observing. Again, I'll show you later. Why I wanted to relate this to this is because you're going to see a lot of, uh, you know, degrees. So in other words, and we're going to be in radian mode. So in other words, um, this would be pi, this would be two pi, this would be pi over two, this would be what, three pi over two, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, you're going to see that on the graph because this tells you where the position is at, where this marker is at, okay? And then you're going to get, so this, this is going to be on your x-axis where it's at. So, you know, it's going to start pi over two, it's going to go to pi, it's going to go to three pi over two, and it's going to go to, uh, you know, two pi. And then this, depending upon what we're looking at, what goes on the x. So I can do velocity, I could do displacement. I could do uh, energy, I could do acceleration, it, it doesn't matter. It's all going to follow simple harmonic motion, okay? And we're going to see that here in a second here. We're going to look at each individual thing. Right, Mr. P? Yes. I want to go to the next slide. All right. All right, so here's the equation we get. We get x, and this is the... the, the where this changes. So we get the, uh, it, it's going to be what we're looking at. In other words, it could be velocity, it could be acceleration, it could be energy. It, this depends on what we're observing. All right. And that's why this could be sine or cosine. A is amplitude of the graph. Okay. So the max, the peak, and T is going to be the period. Okay. Period of the motion, which is peak to peak, would give us the period of the motion. It had, so you have to be careful what type of graph it is because you can only get period if this is time, okay? Um, and again, you can use either sine or cosine here and just kind of understand, uh, you know, what um, what is on the y-axis or what you're trying to describe. And I, again, it'll be easier when you see pictures here. So let's go ahead and get to the pictures so I can describe it. So we'll think about, you know, the same motion we were talking about. Okay, so again, this is just a real brief one. So how to tell if it's sine or cosine, you know, think about the what's happening at the start, right? Are you starting? So if I'm pulling the block out, right? I'm at my max, right? So I'm at my max distance. So blue here, if at the start and I pull it out to start the motion, right? I get blue. So this could be, this could be, position, right? As you go, this would be position two, you're at zero. This would be position three, you were at max, but negative, right? Negative amplitude. And that's amplitude. All right, you go back, that's position two, and you're back at position one. So this could be, you know, the distance from equilibrium. If I look at red, red could be velocity, right? So if I stretch this out at the start, my velocity is zero. When I hit equilibrium, right, my velocity was the greatest. It starts slowing down again. It gets to the max position, right? This is the max position on the other side. It's going to be zero. It's going to accelerate again and get to my max velocity going the other way. So again, this is positive and negative velocity. It just depends on what is on the 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 um the y-axis, whether it's going to be sine or cosine. So obviously, if we're doing velocity here, it's going to follow a sine curve. If we're doing displacement, it's going to be a cosine curve. Okay, and it's the same kind of thing. It's just shift. It's 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 where it starts. In other words, it's just shifted along the the axis, the x-axis here. Okay. So let's look at this and and like dig a little bit deeper into each one. So let's just think about. Um, you know, the spring example, the spring example where I stretch it out and it goes back and forth on the horizontal axis. All right. So the first one I have is a position graph, right? If I look at this, it's cosine. Cause we, we said that literally the last, last one we did was cosine because I 
that was one of the examples I used was position, right? Sorry. <laughs> All right, so that's why I have cosine. Uh, I have position. And if I look here, I have my position set out, right? Just like I wrote out, this would be zero. So I'm starting at my max distance when I had it stretched out. I get to position number two, which is going to be my zero. In other words, equilibrium because I have zero distance. Then I go back down. This is equal to my negative amplitude. So I hit, they have it labeled as amplitude and negative amplitude. This is position two. It's going to travel back and so on and so forth. Okay. If I go to the next one, which I think is going to be velocity, we already talked about that too. Yes, yeah, so this is a velocity. Okay. So this will be a sine curve, right? So I let the velocity go here. It starts at zero, right? I'm holding it, it starts at zero. If I set this way, yeah, it's gonna be moving the negative direction. So it's gonna go down at position two, it has its max velocity, it's velocity on this axis. At position three, it goes back to zero, all right? Then I go back to position two, it has its max velocity. I go back to position one, it has zero, right? It's, it's all the way back. So it's gone this, it's gone, started here, I pulled it back, max velocity here, it keeps going, position three, it stops, it comes back, mass velocity, and I get back to position one and I have a zero velocity, okay? Let's see what's next, I think it's acceleration. Yeah, this is an acceleration graph. So I look here, what do I have on the side? I have accelerate, what the heck? I didn't wanna add a text box. All right, sorry, what the, why are these buttons not working? All right, so this is an acceleration, okay? So think about it, if I hold it here, remember we said it has the maximum amount of acceleration at this point, because the force of the spring is at its maximum. If it's pointed that way, we've set that way to be negative, right? It has its most negative acceleration. As it goes in, this is position two, equilibrium, and equilibrium has zero acceleration, right? It slides back to the maximum position on the left side. So the force is going positive now, has its maximum. All right, it goes back, starts moving back, gets back to equilibrium, zero acceleration, goes all the way back to position one where the force is now negative. So therefore a maximum acceleration. And you know, I look at this one, this is gonna be a cosine function, okay? Let's keep rolling here. Last one is energy, and you can think about it as kinetic and uh, elastic potential energy. Those are the two energies we have, right? So elastic potential energy at the start, I pull it back. It has the maximum amount of potential energy and it's not moving, so it's zero, right? I would let it go as it comes down. Oh, whoops. Bro, this thing is killing me today. All right. As it comes down, the uh, potential energy goes down to zero because at equilibrium, it's zero. At position three, it's now stretched maxed out, so on and so forth. If you look at kinetic energy, it starts at zero. Well, it has negative velocity. Well, it doesn't matter that it's negative because if you remember our kinetic energy is one half mv squared, the square gets rid of the negative. So you'll never have a negative kinetic energy here. All right, so the, it comes back, so it increases at equilibrium. It's at its max velocity, goes back to position three, which is on the other side, zero kinetic energy. But, and if you look at this, okay, if you look at this, we said there's no friction, so there's no outside force. So what that means is energy is conserved, okay? And if we look, it should make sense that the total energy should always equal. So if I add these two at this point, I get here. If I add zero to here, I get there. So if you add at any single point, you're always going to get the same total energy. Okay, law of conservation of energy shown here. All right, so we're going to observe two other two other simple harmonic motions. Uh, so a mass on a spring, in other words, a hanging mass going up and down like that. So we saw that on the circular one, right? That the mass hanging going up and down like that, okay? Uh, to find the period of oscillation, the period of oscillation for that, you're gonna use 
this equation right here. And this is for a hanging mass. The period of a mass on the spring is equal to two pi square root mass over the spring constant. All right. What you should notice is that it does not depend on gravity and it does not depend on how far you stretch it. Okay. It doesn't matter. So those two do not come into play for the period of the spring. The only thing that comes into play is how much mass and the spring constant. That's what you need to remember. For a pendulum, right? We saw the pendulum on the x-axis with the circle, right? The pendulum was swinging back and forth, okay? The pe period of a pendulum is equal to 2 pi square root length times the acceleration due to gravity, all right? Notice that mass does not come into play here. You do not need to know, the mass does not matter and neither does the amplitude. No matter how far you pull back, it'll still remain the same. Now, what does matter is how long it is. In other words, the distance from the, the rotation point to the mass or whatever the end of the string is, and then the acceleration due to gravity that you are undergoing, all right? The gravitational field you're in, all right? And this gives you the period of uh, a spring and pendulum, okay? So let's look here. It says in a lab mass M on earth can either be hung on a string length uh, length L and allowed to swing back and forth with a uh, period T pendulum. All right, so I've got period of pendulum. So actually you're gonna pause this, go ahead, read it, pause it, and then, um, you know, come back and, 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 and answer it. So, um, all right, okay. Oh, we need spring too. So what was spring? All right, so let's see what's happening here. If a 2M mass were used instead, what would happen to the period of the motion? All right, so go ahead, think about that. All right, well, if I look here real quick, if I put 2m instead of there, it's on top of k, so this would have to increase. So I know the period of the spring is going to increase. So it could be this, it could be that. Uh, let's see, and period of a pendulum, is mass even in there? Nope, so it does not change. So therefore, that would give me d. I would go d. Let's see if I got the right answer. All right, and that is simple harmonic motion. Uh, again, pretty pretty straightforward. It's, it's a, a real, really, really quick, quick unit. All right, just some key concepts. You just got to think of those, those points of position one, two, and three, how they work, the periods, how you're going to calculate the periods, and what affects each period. All right.